company has been um, created under the name of Lesage in 1924, but uh, when the company was created, they just had bought all the archives from a previous company named Michonnet. So here we have more than 150 years of archives and we have 60,000 samples. 70,000 now because we just bought a small uh, company named Lanel last year. So one of the main assets of the company is that. And this is very important when you're talking about the challenges that we have uh, with the customers. What we need to provide to the customers is creativity and to be able to understand their needs. We have very different types of clients. We have Chanel, we have Dior, but we also have very little fashion houses. When I say little, it's not a pejorative thing, it's just starting, you know. And we need to be able to be in flexible enough to answer their needs. And Chanel needs is not the same as uh, Marie Cazrantrou, Alexandre Vautier needs. And this is the main challenge of the company is flexibility. Flexibility in terms of addressing different types of customers. Flexibilities in also in terms of what we provide to the customers. Our policy is to try to balance uh, the age of the people in, in, the, in the workshop because for many reasons, and one of the reasons is that we need to train them at least between five or ten years before they get the skills of the finest embroiderers that we have here. People, they really are very attracted to this um, preservation of craftsmanship and, and it's something that is, is much more um, fashionable now. You can have a big economic crisis or you know, a war like the Gulf War that can explain the fact that the activity goes very low, but not only in the embroidery business. I mean, it was the same thing in all the ready-to-wear uh, companies. I mean, many companies collapsed at that time in 2009. So this is one of the reasons. And the other reason is also, uh, you know, you have the mini minimalism uh, fashion for, for a decade, you know, the 90s and then you come back to something more ornate, and then you go back to something else. So um, this is the second element I think that we need to uh, uh, be aware of. And the third, the, the third element is that uh, you, you, you may have a big customer one year, and the year after, oh no, I don't want to embroider anymore. We need to be able to face times when we have less work, and face times when we have more work. And that is why it's, for us it's, it's a really a huge chance to be in the paraffection uh, system in a way because we know that we have a group that can help us if we have some variation. It doesn't mean that they don't tell us you need to be, we need to be profitable. So we need to find a way of having uh, fixed costs that are the less important possible. So being here, things are more concentrated on creation and on the creative side of the business and dealing with studios and uh, and it's not at all the same thing than when you run a, for example, when running Jean-Paul Gaultier. It's always, you know, stop and go. Fashion goes like, goes and goes back and I think that now people want to come back to the core business of what is supposed to be fashion, which is uh, craftsmanship is being part of, of what should be fashion now. When you're in a ready-to-work company or whatever, you're exposed to the outer world, so to the final customers through the department stores, the multi-brand stores, uh, etc. You have to deal with retail uh, expansion, etc. Here, you have the same demand for growth. It's just that you're um, the people you're dealing with are the creative people and not the, the final customers. So it's linked also to these young girls that you have upstairs. There's a, they're very, very proud to show you what they're doing. And for me, every day I go to, in the workshop, even though I'm more in the business part of the... Uh, because for me, it's, it's something that is very um, uplifting to see them and to see their passion to embroider and, and this is for me a, a, a very, very positive thing here.